Hi everyone, I'm Backrolls, and welcome to the Nintendo Nerds, a series where we talk about art, design, and all things Nintendo. So stick around, because in today's video, I'll be sharing some tips on building a beautiful and deep background gradient wash in watercolor. We hope that you had a safe holiday weekend if you're watching this in North America. Whether you were celebrating Canada Day or 4th of July, we hope that it was relaxing and enjoyable. Now, given the news in video games this week was absolutely horrible, and Mac and I are still unsure if we are even going to cover the events in depth, I thought it would be a nice week to share a painting video. There's still a lot of things that I have to learn about in watercolor, but one skill that I think I've picked up pretty well now is the ability to blend colors into a smooth and complex background, so I thought I'd pass along some tips for that. As always, I can never resist painting nerdy Nintendo stuff, so it was a pretty simple design I had in mind, but because of that, I wanted the background to be really deep and dramatic. So. First things first, you're going to want to cover up anything you don't want painted with a generous layer of masking fluid. A few weeks back, we released a video about masking fluid being a must-have for your watercolor arsenal, so be sure to check that video out for more tips. Once the masking fluid is dry and you're ready to start painting, you're going to want to apply a generous amount of clean water. That's because in order to achieve a soft and even gradient, we're going to need to paint in wet on wet technique, which simply means you're going to paint on a surface that you already made wet. For this painting, I used Windsor & Newton Lemon Yellow, Holbein Vermilion, and Windsor & Newton Rose Door. I begin by using a lightest shade, the lemon yellow, and giving the whole thing a solid base. After that, I begin adding in full washes of color, working quickly and damply. And as you can see, I go all the way across the page and past the ends of the page every time. You really wouldn't be able to achieve this sort of coverage without using masking fluid on your main subjects. Keep adding layers, making sure that in between applications, your piece dries out completely. If you don't wait, there's a strong chance you'll create a backwash, which some people describe as the cauliflower effect. When you're looking for this, it can be really beautiful, but it's a common problem that beginning watercolor artists run into. What's happening there is that water is already settling into the page, and so when you try to add even more water to the paper, it doesn't really have anywhere to go, thus spreading the pigment around in unpredictable ways. To make sure this doesn't happen when you're not looking for it, check your paper for the glossiness factor. If it still looks very wet and shiny, you can keep adding paint without trouble. If it looks like it's damp or mostly dry, gently feel the page with the back of your hand. If it's cool to the touch, then it's not ready yet. Once I was happy with the depth of the color, it was time to make the background really pop by adding some fine tech metallic watercolor splatter. I used this technique as an experiment on my Majora's Mask piece and I really loved how it turned out. Make sure that your workspace is sufficiently covered, and then just give your best Jackson Pollock impersonation, either by using a toothbrush or a really loaded paintbrush to create some splatters. Now in order to paint the Snorlax itself, I used a similar method, just painting layers upon layers until I was pleased with the amount of depth that the piece had. All in all, this whole painting required five or six coats of paint, but I think the final effect was worth all of that work. 
Watercolor is often thought of as very gentle and not extremely pigmented, but that's not really the way I like to work. I really like intense colors and buttery smooth gradients, and I'm really pleased that watercolor tube paints make that easy. And there you have it, some basic tips on creating your own watercolor gradient wash. If you have any questions, please let us know. We're a tiny little channel and we read every comment. They really mean a lot to us and we'd be happy to help you along your own art journey. For more nerdy conversations about art, design, and all things Nintendo, please be sure to click subscribe. As always, we hope you leave this video ready to pick up a pro controller, a paintbrush, or a pen. I'm Backrolls, and this has been the Nintendo Nerds.